Alright, so I've never done this before. Usually whenever I talk about what characters are better than others, I just make it a tier list. But today I wanted to pull data from this website called GameWith on the most used characters in PvP. My make this a thing where I revisit this list every like three or so months. Not too often, right? But in the state of the meta right now, you'd be surprised on who the most used characters actually are, considering the most recent festival is Mael and stuff like that. So uh, this list could be good for newer players that might want to know who they are going to be most likely to face in PvP slash who they should be working on because the most used characters in PvP are most likely the best characters in PvP. And uh, yeah, let's just already get going. I'll be separating the most used characters in the front and the most used characters in the back so that they, I think, have better distribution because back characters and front characters are completely different. Starting with the front characters, in number 10 they have Halloween Galfer, which actually does not surprise me. I've been seeing Halloween Galfer quite a bit recently. I don't know what it is exactly. It is pretty good in combination with Ascanor. There is a combo going on of Halloween Galfer, Ascanor, and Meliodas. And then it's a situation where sometimes if you don't go for Galfer in the first turn, they're gonna either rank up Meliodas, and whenever Meliodas is the attack buff, he wipes your whole team. Or they rank up Ascanor in case you go for Ascanor first. And Ascanor, if you put him on the death state, he is going to wipe your whole team with a level 3 card. So Gaffer is in a weirdly good position right now, even though he is a character with terrible stats. Super old, his card sucks, but this one right, in particular. But he does have like probably the strongest card to ever exist, which is rank up. So... It does make sense, plus the passive, again, if you're using like Melee and Ascanor, three different races, so the passive actually works. Makes kind of sense, actually. For number nine, the front characters, they have Light Elizabeth. Honestly, I don't see Light Elizabeth very often. Might be a case where it's a character that I don't, I don't really feel any sort of threat from. So whenever I see her, I don't really recognize her as, you know, a character I'm facing. But they have her as number nine, I kind of can see her being more used in Galfer because, again, the Galfer situations are far in between when I see these teams, but they do remind me that, oh yeah, Galfer, the Ascaro team is actually a pretty powerful team that, you know, more people should be using. Uh, but like Liz, Anniversary is about to come up, and there seems to be a leak that might have a Holy Relic coming for her for Anniversary. I would love that because she's a character that isn't very good right now. Worse than Goddess Liz, which is kind of embarrassing. So I hope her Relic makes her even more powerful and more popular, honestly. Next up at number 8 is actually Chandler. You might be a little confused why Chandler is so low, given he was being used so much as of not so long from now. Well, actually, this list is very updated, it's very current, and right now in the PvP meta, the better demon team is actually now with Chandler. Zeldra's got a holy relic that only works in the front, so your best bet is to actually use Zeldra's in the front for those basic stats and damage increase for himself. So Chandler, while still very powerful and very meta, got knocked out from probably like top 4 before this, I didn't actually check, but I would assume top 4, to now all the way down to number 8. Still a very strong character, and if you don't have Zeldris' Relic, he's definitely better to use than actually using Zeldris in the front, but that Zeldris Relic, really powerful. So it makes sense why he got knocked down so much, but still super annoying to face and super, super, super strong. Number seven is Margaret. I was a little surprised when I saw this, but when I, you know, analyze the characters that are in front of her, it kind of makes sense. Number seven does sound very low, considering Margaret is on the staple goddess team, but when you think of the staple teams, the staple teams are three units, right? So Margaret would have had to be either at the top six or under, because the number one team is not goddesses, obviously. So Margaret makes sense, she's not goddess team, and uh, the person above her might surprise you, or might not. Definitely not, it's goddess Liz. They've essentially served the same purpose, being there with Mael, Defend him, make him strong, that's all they're there for. Margaret has a terrible attack card, so she's there just for the cleanse and damage reduction, essentially, and Goddess Liz is for the all-surrounding garbage she provides. 
Number 5 is the reason why Margaret got knocked down to number 7 instead of number 6. Askenor actually pulling above Goddess Liz and Margaret, which I'm a little skeptical of. I don't think I see Askenor as much as I see Goddess Liz, Margaret, and my all together. Genuinely don't. I see Askenor's again with the Galfer team, with maybe a Fraudron team. I don't think, personally, I see him as often as I see Margaret and Goddess Liz. Maybe it's a case of, again, just like I mentioned with Light Liz, I see Goddess Liz and I feel threatened by her. Maybe that makes me feel like I see her more often. But genuinely, I have been seeing Askenor more often with Roxy. So maybe that's what it has been, like, making him go up on this. There are certainly Askenor teams, but I'm very surprised. Especially make, making him be under Mael, which is the next character on the list, is very weird because you'd think Mael would be together with the other goddesses since they're all ran together. But it kind of also makes sense because there are... You know, a lot of players that use Mael without Goddess Liz and without Margaret. So they may, might be using just Goddess Liz and like Green Sauriel, or they might be using like Green Sauriel and Ludociel, the other one, like Green. Kind of makes sense, but I find it very weird. Askenor being in the middle, so Mael's number four. Askenor is number five. Goddess Liz is number six. I, I don't see how Mael and Goddess Liz are separate. Like, they are a combo. All of them together is a combo. Doesn't make too much sense to me. But Mael, obviously, was the most recent festival. He's very strong. And potentially might become number one as soon as the top three are maybe surpassed by more goddesses, newer goddesses, becoming meta again. Number three is the start of the actual best team in the game, Zaldris. Zaldris is now with a new Holy Relic, which makes him... The better front unit for demons as a support over Chandler, the relic giving 15% basic stats and himself 20% damage increase actually edges him a little bit. He's number three because, again, there are people that use Chandler, so it makes sense that he wouldn't be number one or something like that. But just knowing Zaldra is number three tells you who the number two and one are. Asterosa, of course, is number two. He wouldn't be number one because Meliodas has so many teams, really. But you see a, tre a, 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 a trend here of the teams being kind of together. You know, Zeldrus, Asterosa, and Meliodas are number three, two, one, all together. And it makes sense. But Meliodas ends up edging Asterosa because Asterosa only has one team. He has the demon team. As much as it is the most used team, he still only has one team. But like I mentioned, that one team is always going to be using Purgatory Melee, right? Is always going to be using Purgatory Melee. So he's number one, the most used character in the game, the best character in the game. And uh, he is also used in several other teams as well. Like I mentioned, the Gaffer, Askenor, and Meliodas. There is like people that are using Meliodas, Fraudrin and Askenor, or Fraudrin and Twigo, Liz and Twigo. So many teams using Meliodas. Really wacky teams even. So it makes sense why he's number one, the most used character in PvP, for good reason. He's the best character by far. I don't think... I think Mael can come close if he gets support like Meli did, because if you really think about it, Meli got Estorosa, which was already a very powerful festival, Zeldris, which is a good support, and then we got Chandler, Green Chandler, and Kusok. Green Chandler kind of sucks, but Blue Kusok is amazing as a support. So, my L is still to get those amazing supports. We got freaking the Green Ludociel that sucks. And the characters that he's using on his team are Margaret and Liz, two very old characters. So, potentially, my L can become number one. But right now, is this bad boy. By far and away the best and deserving of number one. Now let's move on to the back units. This list is not top 10, but top 8. In number 8 spot is Lolly Merlin. Makes sense. With full recovery gear and Tarmiel Link, she is an absolute nuisance. You do not want to face someone using this. And uh, that's the only reason why. She is just very annoying because of damage cap. And that's about it. Number 7 is Askenor. Honestly, I don't see Askenor in the back too often anymore. So I guess number 7 is about what I expected. Not... 
If he, if this list was made like you know a few months ago, he would have been maybe number one. Like he would have been number one for back and maybe like not even in the top ten for front because that's just how the meta was like a few months ago. But yeah, number seven makes sense. He can be a really good comeback unit, especially like I said with those post mortem level three AOEs. Those are just killer. Insta wipe, insta win. I'm surprised to see Green Zaldras here. I don't see this guy ever anymore. Maybe uh, pff, people running... Honestly, I don't know. I don't see this guy. No one runs Lilia, <laughs> right? No one's, no one's out here rocking Keo Lilia anymore. If you do, you are dreaming, my, my friend, very much. But I guess some people are still using him. His Relic is good, like for sure. But I genuinely don't see him. So I'm surprised he's so high. Because the other Zeldris is just really better, especially now with the Holy Relic. Ragnarok Pawn in the number 5th spot. I think, I think it makes sense. The ones above him are more specific and he's like a general kind of guy. He just gives 10% attack related stats to anybody. So you can just slot him in on like a attack based Mile team, which no one runs. Everyone just runs the defensive one with Goddess Liz Margaret, but I digress. Or you can rock him on that Galfrey team that I mentioned, just for a little more damage, you know? So he can be slotted in on any team and he kind of works. So him being kind of high, but not the highest, makes sense. Coin Shop Merlin for your ult rushers. Above Bon actually, which is kind of surprising, but it makes sense, I guess. Some people still run her with Mael for the ult rush. People run her obviously with those ult rush teams with uh, Blue Liz. So, and again, she's another character, just like Ban. You can slot her in any team and it will work. Um, makes sense. While being number three unit in the front, he's still also number three unit in the back. Wow. <laughs> Matching. Yep. Yeah. Zelda is still a fantastic support that works in the back. So, again, you're better off now using him in the front because of the... Holy Relic only work in the front, but not everybody's gonna have the Holy Relic. You need to do the new boss to even make the Holy Relic, so... Makes sense why he's still top 3 in the back. If you're using him with Chandler, or you're using him even maybe with a weird Assault Melee team. Great option for those teams. But it is not surprising to me that Kusok is above him, because if you want to use Zeldra's in the front, your best bet in the back is definitely Kusok. He is essentially Zeldra's. Like, his passive just gives 12% attack related stats, just like Zaldrus. But he also lowers crit chance by 20% and crit damage by 30%. So, on top of Zaldrus' attack lower, it's just a phenomenal. And again, this makes for the best demon team. It's, you know, Zaldrus, Estorosa, Mel in the front, and then Kusok in the back. Max attack with the lowering. Obviously, when you're facing a Mael team, for example, you're not going to be lowering anybody with Kusok and Zaldrus' passive. But you take what you can get, and most of the time you're going to be facing other demons anyways, because, you know, those are the most used characters. But unsurprisingly, the number one most used fourth slot in the game is Nanashi. Yeah, no shit. He has the best goddamn fourth passive ever. It's so funny because he also has a whole section of giving unknown 30% basic stats, but... It doesn't matter that people are not getting that off of him. They just won the 20% defense-related stats. And it works, you know? You're taking off ultimate gauge from the enemies when it procs. You have insane defensive-related stats on top of the already one uh, HP and stuff gained from the, the first part. Yeah, most used. And it's funny because he gives stats to unknown. So you'd think unknown would actually be the best pair. And it is. But people actually just use him mostly with goddesses, sometimes with demons, and just whatever. They just use him on whatever, because it just works wherever. He is like Bon, kind of, where he works with whatever team you put him on, but he's a defensive kind of way, and defense is currently the best offense, unfortunately. So some honorable mentions, actually, for characters that are not mentioned in this list, but are very strong, that you might enc encounter on the wild, is Festival Merlin in combination with Philo is an absolutely killer combo. 
that a lot of top players are using, but I guess not enough that it makes a top 10 list. Again, Ekina as well, I mean, where is she? This trio, again, also use Nanashi in the back, so they're propping Nanashi for that list, is killer. If you face this, don't think it's not a great team because it's not on this list. It most certainly is. It will wipe you in one turn if you go second. So, uh, yeah, that's a list. Let me know if I should be updating this. Every, again, like two or three months. Don't want to make this like a, a weekly thing or whatever because the meta can only change so much so fast. But every festival or so, so every two or three months, I think it might be worth just to check out, you know, how things are going. And uh, that's about it.